Good morning, class. This is English 2130 Topics in American Literature at Tennessee Tech Fall 2021 semester. Mr. Smith uh, is the teacher, and I've been so looking forward to talking with you all today um, about the late American poet Kenneth Patchen. His dates are 1911 to 1972, and you might figure out right away that this really makes him too old uh, to be a beat. And although Patchen has so much in common uh, with the beat movement and is clearly an influence and a fellow traveler, especially on uh, some of the minor beat writers, such as Kenneth Rexroth, uh, the two Kenneths really have a, a great appreciation and respect for each other. Uh, uh, Patchen is not considered to be a part of the movement and he would not consider himself to be a part of the movement. Um, he comes from a working class background in Ohio, uh, ended up in the, in the San Francisco area uh, working uh, and is a passionate love of, of his spouse, uh, Miriam. They fell in love young and they were together uh, the entire time. And un unlike some of our uh, other writers and folks we'll be talking about, didn't have the sort of adventurous, uh, uh, amorous adventures that some of these folks did. He is, though, a classic kind of a romantic rebel. Uh, coming from the 19th century, you have the uh, Romantic movement, and a lot of that comes out of England. Uh, and in America, it kind of bleeds into, I guess, what you call the Transcendentalist movement. So maybe you get a touch of uh, of the Romantic vibes from uh, Whitman and and Thoreau and uh, Hawthorne. Um, and you'll have to ask one of my colleagues whose expertise is that period to tell you who the who the major American romantics are, but he comes out of that period uh, uh, in the thirties where the uh, great depression happened and the labor movement was really big uh, and working class identity was really big. Uh, people today, there's a, a politician from uh, Vermont, I believe that is, and a, another one from uh, New York city that are somewhat famous who have popularized uh, discussions in our vernacular of uh, socialism. Um, people don't understand what that means today. They don't talk about it. We don't have any context really for a uh, socialist movement in America outside of that one particular famous uh, uh, former presidential candidate and senator. Um, and, it, and it complicates our ability to talk about these things when it comes to the artwork because people have a lot of assumptions and a lot of maybe misunderstandings. And certainly um, you can arrive at a, at a conclusion that this is bad, Uh, hey, uh, don't mute the teacher during a recorded lecture. That's not a good. That's not a good look. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what 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 that was about. I hope everything is okay. Uh, if you got a, a, a concern, okay, <laughs> all right, we're good. We're good, right? So, um, so in the 1930s during the Great Depression uh, and in the 20s and the teens leading up to it, there was a huge uh, labor movement and a huge uh, socialist movement in the United States. Maybe you'll cover this in uh, your American history courses. Uh, Eugene Debs ran for president um, in that uh, brand. So, so Patchen comes out of the, um, uh, the labor movement and the working class poetry movement, but he also comes out of the peace movement and the pacifist movement. And so... Uh, his life traversed both of the world wars and uh, the threat of nuclear annihilation coming after the second world war and after the United States use of atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki really put a chill over the, um, over the world around the fear of nuclear annihilation. Um, and some of his picture poems that we'll be looking at here in a little bit um, became appropriated and deployed by the peace movement because they seem to be such unbelievable calls for world peace. And as a matter of fact, um, in the late 1980s, I had the thrill uh, to meet Patchen's widow, Miriam Patchen, at a uh, peace rally in uh, Nevada out at the test site where they were blowing up the bombs under the ground. Uh, uh, she was there and they were um, had posters and uh, postcards of some of these picture, these peace based uh, picture poems uh, that you will see. So he is a protest poet. He's a peace Nick poet. He's a labor and working class poet, but he's a visionary. He is somebody who sees in his mind crazy visions. And he uses a lot of humor, he uses a lot of sarcasm, and he uses a lot of these sort of invented characters. He's got a very childlike 
uh, spirit to him, almost so much uh, like a Dr. Seuss spirit even. And this was so much that that people dismissed him. They uh, did not take him seriously. He was was seen by some as a joke of a poet. He was made fun of uh, for his, uh, because he was sincere. He wasn't ironic. He was just, he was in your face, but in, in ways that made people uncomfortable. He was so honest and so pure in his spirit that it made uh, people very uncomfortable. Uh, he's said to be the poet of the youth and I discovered him in high school and, I, and he swept me off my feet. Um, and the first time I taught this uh, material in American literature in 2008 here at the university, I swept a couple of uh, students off their feet. They became huge Patchen uh, fans. He was ahead of his time. You're going to probably see um, some images here that you would recognize uh, from the kind of art that we do see on, on, on social media. And you will see kind of almost a way that the picture poem uh, could be, you know, a thing for Pinterest and Instagram. Um, um, but unfortunately, outside, he did gain some fame, even though he was really disregarded by a lot of the poetry establishment. Um, but today he's so obscure and so forgotten. There are very few uh, professors who are working seriously with Patchen. And I'm really grateful to be one of them. And I want to be able to keep his legacy alive. Um, in December, he, he shares the same birthday as my spouse on December 13th. It will be his 110th birthday. Um, so maybe I'll get to try to find some other patch and people uh, uh, to celebrate that. Um, it's um, really sad to me that he's not more uh, he's not more famous and that his books are not more well known. But his, his publisher, New Directions, did bring some of his seminal works um, in uh, into publication, uh, reprints into publication, including the picture poems a few years ago. Um, and I might next semester uh, just go ahead and require uh, the, uh, uh, the, those as a, as a text for, uh, American literature. Um, uh, this, um, uh, person, according to, uh, Larry Smith, uh, his biographer, um, he was one of America's primary poets of engagement. He welded his life and art as one. For many, he remains the model of the rebel poet in purity of his faith, the abundance of his creative output and the example of his life, his self-proclamation as a world crier and bluff caller in a climate demanding such a dangerous career is ultimately revealing for passion labored hard at what he felt compelled to do. Nothing less than creating a new world from the vitality of his vision and art. His moral position as artist is summed up well by his fellow poets. Rex Roth said his voice is the voice of conscience, which is forgotten. William Everson, uh, Brother Antoninus, and we'll, we'll reference these guys in, in, in just in passing, two minor uh, beat fellow travelers. He says, I best see Patchen as one who cocks a terrible right arm against the glass jaw of New York, stunning it with the contradiction of its values, which he can summon against it. And it seems... If it seems impervious to his passion and his power, that is only the deceptiveness of time, for he will survive as the power of the poet always survives the metropolis that hates him, ignores him in the moment of his accusations. Bless him in his pain and passion, for his cry is heard. Um, he merges uh, as a working class, a, a poetry of working class poet protest into a prose and poetic portrayal of the world's madness and a cry for peace. Patchen developed in his fabulous fables, love poems and picture poems, a deep yet modern mythology, which conveys a sense of compassionate wonder amidst the world's violence. He also experimented in forms such as the anti-novel, concrete poetry, poetry jazz, poetry play, drawings and poems, and finally, uh, the picture poems. And uh, he suffered a series of uh, back injuries and he had several um, medical procedures and he had a period of great health and then he had a botched surgery uh, and that he spent the last uh, 12 to 13 years of his life completely uh, bed bound, uh, back pain, uh, crippling back pain and the picture poems emerged out of a, a time where he couldn't he couldn't do anything else he was stuck in bed and so he he collected all of these art supplies and started making these canvases and these these um these templates of joy and rage amidst great physical pain and and miriam his his devoted spouse and lover stayed by his side uh the entire time uh theirs is a great kind of a great romance, kind of a, almost a, you know, like a John and Yoko or a Johnny and June 
uh, Carter Cash kind of situation. Uh, just a, a true love um, and uh, a great art. Um, so we're going to dig in. There's so much more I could say. Um, you know, we could listen to his jazz poems. We could read uh, many of his collections. And I'm a collector of Patchen and his books are hard to find. Um, I've got probably about 10 or so Patchen books. Um, I just by my side, I have the uh, the picture poetry book. Um, you aren't going to find any new, co new copies of this, but you'll probably be able to find one online. It's probably not that expensive. I haven't looked it up recently what it's going for um, online. And this is a um, a second or third copy of this. Um, it was given to me, though, as a gift um, by a girlfriend in high school. Uh, Sierra Club put it out, uh, this version, in, um, I believe, in the in the 80s. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a, a, a date stamp on here when they put this book out. That that's, Books are supposed to put that in there. Anyway, we're going to dive in and look at some pictures from the picture poems. And then I'm going to talk to you uh, uh, after we looked at these um, about the um, the poetry assignment and, and that you can do picture poems if you want to. I've had some wildly creative students in this class who have done, uh, who have taken uh, this this particular day so to heart that they've kind of made it the, the thing that they carry into the future um, out of this class. Now, um, it's not as much fun when we're not in the real classroom as far as the show and tell of, uh, uh, of the picture poems, but we can, we can do this and you'll be able, um, we will have a, a, a poetry reading day, um, but if somebody does a picture poem, they could also show that on that day as well. You're gonna have kind of like your own uh, open mic as a class on the day of the week that these projects are due. I believe that's gonna be sometime in early October. I'll go over that um, later on in the call. I'm so excited uh, to share these poems with you. But, you know, if you get swept away uh, by Patchen. Um, I haven't really emphasized this in the past couple of semesters, but I would love it if somebody also wrote their, uh, their major paper on Patchen. Um, uh, I have been quite passionate about Ginsburg and Kerouac, uh, Diane De Prima. Somebody took this class five years ago now or so and became a Diane De Prima scholar and went and got their master of arts and literature uh, in uh, writing and is now working on a PhD dissertation about Diane de Prima, one of the few people who's devoting their whole career to one of these these minor writers, de Prima, not in the top echelon, um, is a graduate of, of, of TAC, a former student of this class who fell in love uh, with this unit. And uh, certainly you're not required to like any of this, but I, I, I think I would be um, dishonest and I wouldn't be bringing my A game if I didn't explain to you guys that this whole stretch here now um, pretty much this whole class, but this entire this entire stretch here is something that I've committed 20, 30 years of 30 years ago this summer is when I went to the Jack Kerouac School. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys some of those snapshots later. So I've spent 30 years on this topic, at least, and, I, and I'm passionate about it. And um, it's not it's not worth getting up in the morning, brewing that coffee, um, coming to campus to talk about something that I'm kind of meh about, kind of blah, sort of mediocre about. So I'm very passionate about these literary topics. Now, you don't have to, you don't have to catch the bug, right? Um, it's, it, it, it might be like catching COVID as far as y'all are concerned to get excited about this. But I, I do expect you all to, to maintain that posture of, of welcome, open-mindedness and engagement just to at least take them you know, for whom they are and give them uh, an opportunity, give them a, a, a gentle hearing. And then if at the end of the day, you walk away and you're like, I'm so glad we're done with that. I'm never going to read another book as long as I live. And I, and I got a good grade in American literature, uh, more power to you. But the picture poems of things that I'm passionate about, I'm extra passionate about the picture poems. But hey, look, we're going to be doing Bob Dylan and the Grateful Dead later. Look, y'all, you're just going to be stuck. Uh, with my um, energetic recommendations uh, for these materials, whether you you like it or not, and I hope at least a couple of you uh, catch the bug. So here's Patchen saying, "Every man is me." This is the frontest piece to that book uh, of picture poems. What shall we do without us? Every man is me. I am his brother. No man is my enemy. I am every man. He is in and of me. This is my faith, my strength, my deepest hope, and my only belief. We are one. 
Um, oh, these have page numbers from the reprinted um, anthology of picture poems that I've used in the past. Um, uh, do not apply today since you haven't bought it, though I should I should have brought that this morning. I pulled it out yesterday. I'll find that and I will uh, I'll recommend it um, to you guys, um, uh, not while I'm recording. So you guys can get that. So we begin uh, with these beautiful uh, flying orange creatures and the saying all at once is what everything is all at once is what everything is. You can, if you get inspired while I'm showing these, you can go ahead and add your uh, inspiration to the chat. But um, I will, um, after I finish uh, showing you these slides, I will pause and give an opportunity for you all to give some feedback. Uh, I'll stop the recording at that point, And I also then will get into the, um, uh, into the assignment uh, sheet a little bit for your midterm. You have two, two big assignments, the essay and the creative assignment. Now, we're going to drop both of those finally. Uh, at long last, I apologize for the delay. Caring is the only daring. Oh, you know it. Caring is the only daring. Oh, you know it. All things are all things, true? And if not, how not then my little two-legged flea name me one simple thing that is not all things a eh? universalism and inclusion have gained so much traction in our world uh and uh you know it's kind of you know sounds like a bob marley song sounds a little kumbaya Sounds a little bit like let's all stand in a circle and sing Kumbaya, which I highly recommend doing if you've never done it before. It's a really fun thing to do. Um, it's a cliche, but it's fun. It's worth it. It really is. Um, uh, but most folks, when they practice inclusion, they always exclude somebody. And so, uh, you know, to, to practice true inclusion is, is really hard to do because it requires us to love our en enemies and our adversaries. And it's, it's, it's almost... It's almost truly hard, hard, impossible to do. So, um, and and Patchen isn't um, in any way perfect on this because you're going to see that joy in some of these slides, but you're going to see his his bitter sarcasm and smart Alex side in some of the other slides as well. The argument of innocence can only be lost if it is won. The argument of innocence can only be lost if it is won. It is a paradoxical statement. It's an upside down, illogical, counterintuitive, countercultural statement. The argument can only be lost if it is won. Not everything should be a competition. We live in a world of winners and losers, but not everything has to be that way. Or as some singer in the, you know, was it 90s, was it a 90s or an aught song? Hey, I'm a loser, baby, <laughs> you know? Hey, we win some, we lose some. The world is up and the world is down. That's the way that the world goes around. Uh, the best hope is that one of these days, the ground will get disgusted enough to just walk away, leaving people with nothing more to stand on than what they have bloody well stood for up until now. The best hope is that one of these days, the ground is just going to get up and walk away. The world is nothing that can be known in the shadow we shall see the color of god's eyes again beyond love there is no belief beyond love there is no belief we have 
telescopes today that can travel vast expanses of time and space to see, to peer into things we've never seen before. We have microscopes today that can, can look at things that are so small, so much so that while the um, uh, permafrost, that's like the, it's like down there on the core level there of earth that the permafrost that's melting in some of these glacial areas is releasing, it's not only releasing gases into the uh, universe, into the air that we should, into the uh, atmosphere that we should be worried about, but the permafrost, they, they found what they call micro animals. He's like one cell critter thingy, whatever. I don't even know. Look it up. Google a micro animal and permafrost because I, I didn't believe it until I heard it. But they can look at it because of a microscope. They uh, The melting permafrost is releasing uh, things that are thousands. Of, they might be millions of years. Like really old stuff that had been frozen <laughs> has been released and it's still alive. Right. So so at a time class, how, how can I say this? At a time when we know more than we've ever known, there is still so, so much that we don't know. And that that edge. That that fast leading sharp future edge where we can admit that the world is nothing that can be known, that there's still something left that's mysterious. This is a. This is a profound thing. And it's from that acknowledgement of mystery in the shadow, we shall see the color of God's eyes again. We can say beyond love, there is no belief. I'm not going to be able perhaps to be able to read all of this to you. I'm going to try. The continuous Christ dying, rising, O seasons of earth, sky, sea, and air, and one touching, hearing the seeing of the sun and uh these mistaken and pathetic imaginings, man, bird, fish, beast, flower, stone, tree. Oh, this forever leaving animal always arriving where all reason I'm going to see if I can find the version of it in my book. Uh, and y'all continue to just, just enjoy that image. I'm going to see if I can read the rest of it to you. All reason denies it standing back and forth and yet again into that unmoving, nothing, everything, eternity, single clockman, life, death, oh, hallucinatory mask, the continuous Christ. I don't know um, if it is related, but I feel like the continuous Christ of Patchen is related to what a guy called Matthew Fox uh, called the cosmic Christ, a guy called Richard Rohr called uh, the universal Christ. Y'all can look those up. Cosmic Christ, Universal Christ, the, the the continuous Christ. All reason denies it standing back and forth and yet again into that unmoving nothing, everythingness. Back and forth and yet again, eternity, single clockman, life, death, oh, hallucinatory mask. Dying, rising, oh, seasons of earth, sky, sea, and air, in one touching, hearing, seeing of the sun, and these mistaken and pathetic imaginings. The continuous Christ. I have a funny feeling that some very peculiar looking creatures are out there watching us. I have a funny feeling that some very peculiar looking creatures are there out there watching us. Uh, this one's one of my favorites. This one uh, is, you know, it's, I mean, these aren't quite, you know, these aren't quite Hallmark cards. They're a little bit too, um, a little bit too surrealistic. Some of them a little bit uh, too uh, disturbing uh, to be, uh, to be Hallmark cards. But I, this one, uh, this one is, is, is one that, that, that's close to something you could just, you could just give it to, you know, a significant friend. Um Steal it right now. Take a screenshot. Give it to your significant other today. Imagine seeing you here. After all, it's not every day that the two nicest people in this big old lousy world get together like this. Imagine seeing you here. It's not every day that the two nicest people in this big old lousy world get together like this. 
imagine, imagine seeing all y'all on this call today. So I said that he's not, you know, I, I made that allusion to inclusion because he was so, uh, so inclusive. Um, and, I, and I think sometimes we, we, we say that we love everybody. We say, you know, have, uh, what, uh, people, what do people say? All lives matter, right? You know, we say stuff like this, but do we really mean it? And I think, you know, the, the hypocrites and the, and the Pharisees, you know, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Patchen definitely calls out he, what is the, the word that we say now, the phrase we say is speak truth to power. He says, man, would you look at your leaders? A puckering up like they expected God to kiss them right smack on the mouth any minute now. Guess all those crude and unenlightened people must have tortured and starved and murdered themselves just for the heck of it. That's some strong medicine, Patchen. That is a hard slide for me to look at. Boy, oh boy. And what's behind that rage, right? What's behind that vind vindicated anger is grief. Accumulated, unprocessed grief because we can't make a picture poem about it and say, my God, the sorrow of it. Write a sad song about it. Write an angry, sad poem about it. You got to have somewhere to go with this stuff. These feelings, we're, these little bodies of ours, these little uh, cloaks of skin that we walk around in, we, we contain a lot of grief. My God, the sorrow of it. And then you can walk up to say to somebody and say, I proclaim this international shut your big flapping mouth week. I don't know what week that is, but I, I proclaim it. I name it. I name it and proclaim it. You guys can too. The one who comes to question himself has cared for mankind. The one who comes to question herself has cared for uh, womankind. The one who comes to question themselves has cared for humankind. We, we, we ask ourselves the hard questions. We do the hard things, right? We can do the hard things. What shall we do without us? What shall we do without us? That's the name. That's the name of this book. What shall we do without us? What is not then is, in every case, the world. What is not then is, in every case, the world. What is not is, what isn't is. It is what it is, and it is, it is what it is, and it is what it ain't. It ain't what it is. It is and it isn't. At the same time, it isn't what it is, is, wasn't, was. Which of us is not flesh, last and first in that common cause? Beyond this, I would like to be able to say, to say more. Which of us is not flesh, last and first in that common cause? Beyond this, I would like to be able to say, to say more. Peace, or we all perish. And to think it all started out like any other world, intended one might have almost have been led to believe to last for a good long time. You know, is this the end? Is it arrogant to say that it's the end? Uh, do we know? You know, are you all are you all the last generation? I mean, this is some heavy stuff, right? To be 20, 20 years old and be told, oh man, this is it. You guys are you guys are the last stop, the last chance uh, to save humanity. And if it's not a, a a global nuclear war, it's a global climate change. If it's not that, it's something else, and it's a pandemic. Peace now for all men, or amen to all things. Peace now for all men. Or amen to all things. Now, when I get back here, I expect to find all of you marching through the streets with great bunches of wildflowers in your arms.
when I get back here, I expect to find all of you marching through the quad at Tennessee Tech with great bunches of wildflowers in your arms. I expect to see you marching down Willow Avenue with great bunches of wildflowers in your arms. I uh, taught these uh, picture poems and I came to class on the last day of class and a student had found a, a print of this, a color print of this and framed it for me because they could tell I was marching with wildflowers in, 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 in my arms. And, and she chose to join me to march to march with wildflowers. Not everybody, not, not every one of y'all is gonna march with, with big sunflowers, but maybe somebody, uh, maybe somebody will, right? And that will be enough. That will be enough. So I'm gonna stop the uh, recording uh, before I get into the creative midterm. And there is gonna be a creative midterm. Uh, it is an option on the creative midterm to do a picture poem. Um, I am going to uh, first encourage you guys to give me about four minutes, four or five minutes of feedback on the uh, picture poems in the chat or um, by unmuting uh, your mic. And then I'll get into the picture uh, picture 